Throughout the Israel-Hamas war, social media has captured all the latest developments and opinions. But in the United States, all that unfiltered information provided without context can be confusing and misleading, particularly among politically-minded young adults. Brandon Leach is an American University student and the vice president of the Campus Network for the American Jewish Committee. Everybody is just bombarded by uh, a lot of anti-Semitic or uh, pro-Palestinian or pro-Israeli content online. It's like all I get on Instagram Reels, uh, and that can take a mental toll. I would say also, like, it's a really scary situation to be in as a young student. On Washington area college campuses, students are finding others who share their views, whether they be pro-Israel or pro-Palestinian. Israelis and Palestinians alike have converged on the National Mall to express outrage, says Tahir Herzala, the director of outreach and grassroots at the American Muslims for Palestine. Our community here, Palestinian American community, as you can see in the thousands, people have come out to express their outrage. Since Hamas militants attacked Israelis on October 7th, resulting in 1,200 deaths, many social media posts and mainstream media reports have focused on Israel's siege of Gaza which has resulted in the deaths of over 14,000 people, according to figures from the Hamas-run health ministry in Gaza. Such a focus on Gaza may explain data from the video streaming platform TikTok that showed videos with the hashtag Free Palestine outnumbered those with the hashtag Stand with Israel by 2.9 million as of November 13th. But TikTok itself warns that such blunt comparisons of hashtags are severely flawed and lack needed context. But other research has shown that sympathy for Palestine among millennials had been growing before October 7th. TikTok points to Pew Research data gathered between 2006 and 2016 that shows older generations, who are likely less present on the app, were more likely to sympathize with Israel than younger generations. Some young people see this taking of sides online as an opportunity for connection. Max Katz and Farid Abdibi started Left Middle Right, a digital media organization at George Washington University's campus that aims to help college students and other young people articulate their thoughts. And I'm sure there are people radicalized on both sides, but the majority are just more involved and are ref more reflective of who they are and where their roots are. And if both sides just really sign a room, let's say GW for Israel and Students for Justice in Palestine, and they talked for an hour, they realize that like they don't hate each other. They don't have an issue with their belief system. It's just a matter of their identities that clash on a geopolitical stage. Meetings like this can provide a type of online ceasefire between groups radicalized by the internet, even as those between Israel and Hamas remain tenuous. Anthony Labruto, VOA News, Washington.